Greetings this morning from Botswana. I thought I'd share a little bit today about things that have been helpful to me in terms of understanding the Bible. Just as far as uh, just as far as reading, only too many times we are utterly reliant on other people. And in truth, we don't really need that. According to 1 John 2, 27, the Holy Spirit can lead his people into doing this. So indeed, when I'm sharing this, this is for born again Christians. Just some things I'll try to run through quickly here. Well, relatively quickly. The first thing, of course, is prayer. Don't trust yourself. Don't trust the suggestions made. Please go to God and ask him to quicken your mind so that you might understand what his word is saying. Another suggestion I have is, I say, don't get caught up in chapter and verse. That is because the chapters and verses of the scripture were put in afterward, after the scripture was written. Say like in the epistles in the New Testament, the epistles are letters. It's one entire letter. And so sometimes we might see a verse that, that's isolated by itself and not know what to make of it. Let's look at it in the context of the whole passage that is given. That it takes me to my next suggestion, and that is when we're reading a scripture, like a verse or so, or so, we should always take it in the context of the passage that is given. I mean, the verses many times are fine by themselves, and other scriptures support them, but uh, not always. The first thing we should always look at is the context. For example, like John 3.16, we know, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But verse 18 says, He that believes not is condemned already, because he believes not in the Son. So you see, in the context of the passage, it's not just one thing. Uh, but it is the it is something that we rely on, and it's a very great verse, John three sixteen, and very true in and by itself. The other thing is we want to take our Bible reading in the context of the entire Bible. For example, you know I've heard well, these are usually non Christians. They would protest about some little items of the law from the from the Old Testament, which of course we are not under obligation for anymore but then they would be very critical of it. Or a person could say, eye for eye, I'm going to take an eye for an eye, I'm going to take my revenge. But we know from the New Testament that Jesus doesn't want us to do that anymore. And I just want to, I will have an example to point out how easy it can be to be deceived. And we see this a lot, and I'm picking on the prosperity gospel, which uh, we're dealing a lot with here in Botswana, and I think the world is in general. And that is where the idea that God will keep you healthy, wealthy, and in good favor with men, generally. But we read this from 2 Corinthians 8, 9. I have this here, and it says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that through his poverty you might be rich, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Wow, it's telling us that we can be rich. But I would tell anyone in a heartbeat that God is not about giving us earthly riches. He will supply our needs, whatever they are, whatever they cost. But he is not about making us materially wealthy. He doesn't want us to love the world or the things of this world. And so anyway, you have heard this here. Again, I read it. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. So what riches is he talking about? Let's just take a look at those. I mean, now we have to think of the context of the whole Bible. We look at Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Of course, mammon means money or riches of this world. Then we can also go to Mark chapter 10. Verses 23 to 25, And Jesus looked round, around and saith to his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered them again and said, Children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter 
into the kingdom of heaven. And again, we see it from Luke. In 624, Jesus says, Woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Wow, that's pretty, uh, pretty strong there. But of course, there is this one key verse that we would see from 1 Timothy chapter 6. I'll start with verse 5. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself, for godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced them themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called. So this is just a great example of how you could take one verse out of context Someone says riches, but they're still seeking the riches of this world. The riches of the Christian are not of this world, and they should not be of this world. Okay. My next suggestion is, uh, this is number five. Again, all of these things will be in the description at the bottom. And you may uh, say a prayer or blessing for my wife who puts all this in. We should focus on the New Testament. I don't mean to cut out the Old Testament. I love the Old Testament. But what I'm saying is that the New Testament is our direction for today. There is a progression in Scripture. And so if we are trying to see where we should be at, you know, let's make sure the New Testament is backing it up. Sometimes people like to go to the Old Testament trying to justify themselves in something, and the New Testament really doesn't, doesn't support it. It steers us in another direction. We have the teachings of Jesus directly, as well as the examples of the apostles uh, for our lives. So I would just say focus on the New Testament to see what the difference is. I would also suggest that you cross-reference cross everything with the King James Bible. Some people won't like to hear that. But again, I'm telling you, the King James is the base scripture and it is the whole scripture. And everything else, all of these other versions, are they come from the Bible revision. And unfortunately, what you're going to see is a lot of meaning has been changed from the King James to these revisions. And these are not really as honest as you might think they are, because the people have to make changes in words. There's like a certain percentage or, or thing, number of words that have to be changed to make it look different so that they can get their copyright and make money. I'm not going to tell you not to use another version, but the King James is the foundation. And you should remember to cross-reference it, especially if you have questions, just to be sure that your version is consistent with the, with the preserved Word of God. I would also say don't rely on devotionals or commentaries. The reason I don't like devotionals is because we tend to rely on them, and uh, when we rely on them, I guess that's really the problem. If we had them just as something extra, that might not be bad to get someone else's point of view, but to rely on them is kind of to be letting someone else, you know, live your Christian relationship for you. All you're doing is seeing through their eyes and what they say, and you need to be studying scripture and praying and seeking for yourself. So don't rely on them or commentaries. God is well able to interpret his word to you directly. I'm not saying that you can't use them, but I think uh, it's kind of a waste of time in some ways. So don't use them unless you really feel you have to trust in the Lord instead. I also just say that take quality over quantity. In other words, don't try to read a lot of scripture. Try to focus on some scripture and really let it sink in. Really meditate on it, saying, wow, what is, what is God saying? How can I apply this to my life? Those are things that would be very important. And so while it is good to read scripture, I'm just saying if we're, we're jammed for time, let's please take quality over quantity because you won't get any points for, 
for reading a whole book if you haven't gotten anything out of it. It won't help you anyway. Take And the next one kind of follows in line. Take your time. Take your time in reading. Don't jam things in. Make sure you have enough time. And this can be a problem. It can be a real challenge, especially if you're getting up early, taking, uh, taking care of a family. But please take your time. Allow time for God and put him first because we want Jesus to be the Lord of our lives. So how is he the Lord when we're not committing our day to him from the start, but only seeing him at the end just before we're ready to, to pass out from fatigue? So these are just some suggestions for you. I also have a couple of ideas for, for beginners. Uh, if you wanted to read through the Bible in one year, the, I think the program is either three chapters a day or 85 verses a day from the Bible would get you through in a year or about a year. Uh, another thing that I would say, if you're really a Bible beginner, just starting out, you say, where should I start at? Uh, we knew one person who was unsaved said, no, nope, I'm going to start at Genesis. I just go from the beginning and read all the way through. And it may avail him well, but if you're looking for your spiritual support, I think you should really start with the New Testament. I would recommend the Gospel of John and then the Acts of the Apostles and Romans, three books in a row, and then uh, continue to read the rest of the New Testament. And from the Old Testament, you could begin with like Psalms and Proverbs, and then get back into the rest of the Old Testament. You could well go then from the beginning. Uh, these are just some ideas that I have from you. Have for you. Uh, you may do as the Lord leads you, as you are able. We are all very different individuals. So I pray that God would quicken this to you, uh, bless you with it. Hope you have a good day in Christ. Bye bye.